So one of the most significant things for me with Windows 10 is some of the new first party apps that come pre-installed on Windows 10. The whole idea of universal apps and continuum and being able to run these apps on your mobile devices and, be, and then being able to scale successfully is a pretty big deal. Obviously Ubuntu is also vying for the same sort of functionality, but how do these first party apps stack up against some of the other first party apps that we've experienced on other Linux distributions, especially the mainstream ones like Ubuntu and Linux Mint? Well that's what we're going to be looking at today in this Windows 10 coverage here on the Infinitely Galactic channel. Subscribe if you're liking the series and if you want to if you want to see any other videos in particular then let me know in the comments below. Make sure to tag the channel so I can see it and that would be much appreciated. All right, let's get into this. Okay, so when it comes to first party apps on Windows 10, I'm going to cover the basic ones because obviously we could delve in a, a bit more to the Microsoft app ecosystem, but let's talk about the new ones that have come window, with Windows 10. First up, we're going to have a look at the actual store. Now, obviously, the store has undergone a little bit of work. It's a little bit more like an app store, what you would expect in terms of seeing ratings and plenty of options there in different categories uh, and also a lot more colorful photo banners and all that fun stuff. So while this is a great step and, and I guess the apps that are coming into the app store with Windows 10 is, uh, is getting a little bit better. Um, but look, it is a little bit Spartan still. Um, I'm not going to want to spend an awful lot of time in here, but I think one thing that I am happy to see is that we now have one store for all of your apps, your games, your music, your movies, and your TV. And as you can see, we've just experienced our first app crash. So, yay. Let's go back into the store and try and repeat that. So, again, we have a look here in the movies and TV, and you've got actually a pretty decent catalogue of entertainment here that you that's available to you, both to stream um, and to cash locally, I believe, as well. Uh, so you've got TV series and movies, and then you've got, of course, your music, which, of course, ties into Groove Music that uh, used to be Xbox Music. So um, by and large, I'm noticing the music in here is cheaper than what you'll find in the iTunes store, which is fun to see. Um, but when it comes to apps and games and availability, yep, it's, it's a functional store, apart from the fact that it keeps crashing. So we'll move on. Also, I want to look at Microsoft Edge. Microsoft Edge is the successor to Internet Explorer. Obviously, they weren't getting away from the fact that Internet Explorer has some pretty terrible stigma. What they've done with Microsoft Edge is completely redesigned a web browser from the ground up. Uh, it apparently shares very little with Internet Explorer in terms of code base. Um, they've tried to create something that's brand new and uh, functions a lot differently. So as you can see, it's a lot more simple. Um, Project Spartan is what this was called back in the Windows Insider uh, development preview days. And uh, to be honest, I've actually been quite enjoying it. Um, it's quick, it's fast, it gets all of it, I mean, it picks up all of the websites that, um, you know, that I visit regularly and it puts them here on the little, um, on the new tab page. And when you open it up for the first time, it will give you a bit of a news feed, kind of like a blink feed or a Google Now feed of all of the news that, um, that might matter to you or maybe not. But the big thing with Microsoft Edge is being able to use the web in a bit more of a natural way. So as you can see here on this uh, news.com.au site, there is a lot of pop-ups and ads and stuff, funnily enough, about Windows 10. That's a little weird. Um, but there's a lot of stuff here that I just don't want to see. So the reading mode that's built into Microsoft Edge is a great improvement as, uh, yeah, well, it strips away all the crap and just gives you uh, the straight up article, which is immensely useful. Obviously, we've had this in add-ons and stuff in the past, but it's one of those things where you want to see it in a modern browser because that's what we all enjoy on our phones, right? So then also we do have the um, annotating, and I think this is what they're kind of making a big deal out of, the ability to annotate on the web itself and then share that directly to someone else. So for instance, I can highlight certain things. Um, I can draw directly on the web, which, I mean, this is going to be useful for some people and not others. So once you've highlighted something, then you can share it to uh, via Facebook or mail or OneNote. And, uh, and I guess it, it creates a great way to be able to augment the sites that you visit and the stuff that matters to you. So when it comes to research and that sort of thing, I can see the great application there. Uh, otherwise, it's a pretty run-of-the-mill web browser. It, ex it behaves in the way that you'd expect it to. Um, and the good thing is that you can change the default for search engine from Bing to whatever you so choose. Google, DuckDuckGo, it doesn't really matter. It's all pretty straightforward to do. So let's move on to Groove Music. Now, I love listening to music. I listen to quite a bit of music. Um, so obviously the music app, it, it hasn't really changed too much from, uh, from what the music app was back in the Windows 8.1 days. 
but, uh, but some of the new things that are here are a much more scalable interface. It'll obviously automatically scan your entire music collection, get album art and all that fun stuff. Um, so yeah, it's functional. I think I'd love to see this in a background play mode so you can actually quit out of the application but still have the music playing. Because uh, right now if you quit out of the music while it's playing, it will actually stop the music playing, which is not really what you want. Um, searching by artists, albums, tracks, playlists, songs, um, it all functions pretty well. And, uh, and obviously they give you, instead of a sort of a jumbled list of uh, songs that are available to buy, it just gives you a link to the store at the bottom. So, um, so that's much more helpful. When it comes to settings, you can see here that you can automatically have all of your purchases and stuff show up in the music app. And also if you have a decent amount of OneDrive storage, you could also store plenty of your songs in OneDrive um, that would then uh, trans carry over to uh, any other um, devices or apps that you had with Groove Music installed. So that's not a bad improvement. Also, the Photos app has undergone a bit of work. They're quite proud of this one. Um, when it comes to opening up a photo in, uh, and obviously this is just linked into my OneDrive, so it's not great quality here, but what you can do is you can auto enhance them and do a bit of light editing as well. So you can see here, once the editors come in, you've got filters there that are a bit like Instagram filters, make it very easy. And all of these changes will save to the cloud as well. So I really actually like the, the simple lightweight editing that they give you here uh, in the Photos app. Uh, really simple, something that your mum and dad would be able to handle, no worries at all. They've got some great slideshow options and um, to be honest, it's not too bad at all. Now, when we compare the apps that we've said so far with some of the offerings from Ubuntu and Linux Mint and the like, I definitely find there's a lot more options and control with apps like Banshee and apps like Shotwell Photo Manager. And, uh, and they might not be as modern looking as what they provide here in Windows 10, but I think functionality wise, they're still winning. Um, so for the power users that want to have the options that um, Banshee and Shotwell and Firefox provide as web browsers, first of all, Firefox is a better web browser, uh, in my opinion, than Microsoft Edge at this point because of add-ons and one thing in the next. Um, but when it comes to first party apps on a Linux distribution, I feel like that is up to the distribution. Ubuntu doesn't do a fantastic job of first party apps. Linux Mint does a little bit better in my opinion and some, some distributions absolutely nail it when it comes to out of the box first party apps. Um, but here in Windows 10, I think, I think we get a decent amount of applications uh, here that are functional for the everyday user. The power users are already gonna have their particular software that they enjoy. Um, but even pr productivity stuff like uh, like the mail and the calendar app, you can see that, I mean, they definitely have a very Outlook-esque theme to it. For anyone that you has used Outlook before knows what they're on about here and they're very simple to pick up and use. And I think the user experience and the user um, interface design of these apps is really good. Uh, they make sense, they translate well across all your different screen sizes. And I think that's where Windows 10 is really um, trying to vie for people's attention is the fact that you can have these apps that work well across all your different screen sizes and all your different devices. And I think that's something that obviously the open source world has a fair bit to go in terms of having apps that scale really well across different screen sizes and types. Um, but yeah, I think they, they trend a nice balance here between being touchscreen friendly, but also being making sense with a mouse and a keyboard. So what first party apps do you like on Windows 10? Uh, for me, I'm actually a pretty big fan of the email program. It hasn't changed too much, but it's very simple. It's very clean. It's very elegant. Anyway, what's your personal favorite? Leave it in the comment section below and uh, I'll try to get to as many as I can. As always, if you like what you see here, then give it a big thumbs up because it does help out the channel. Subscribe if you want to see more content and I will see you in the next video. You can follow me on Twitter in the meantime. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.